And welcome back, Achievers, to your Easy Achievers Game Podcast for the week of December 5th, mm. 2021. We're in the last throws of the year. And I'm, of course, joined, as always, Alex. Hello. How are you? Now, Alex, mm. I asked how are you like I do every single week. Yeah. This time I know how you've been. Yes. A little under the weather. But yes, I felt f- bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to leave it at that. I have felt bad. But yeah. first off, you sound much better than, than yeah. what you did before. So you're feeling a tiny bit better. Not the vid, yeah. everyone. No one freak out. Alex is okay. No vid. No, but you no, do no. feel a little yeah. better. No flu or vid. So yeah, it wasn't flu. It wasn't vid. It was just a little, just a little thing bug. going around. But you got better. Yep. You took the medicine. Just, yeah. Day quote, night quote, mix, man. Mm, <laughs> well, not, to, not at the same time. No, I but not at the same time, yeah. You like, yeah, made yeah, a cocktail yeah, of yeah, it, yeah. drank it all. Yeah. Well, congrats on feeling better. We're glad you feel better. Sorry, Achievers, that we missed you for those few days. He was very ill. He was very ill, so. Yeah. I was like, I'm not going to do a solo podcast. That's lame. Anyways. Hey. I missed you. But you know what didn't change in that time period? The way you can support us. You can go over to a podcast service of your choice. If you're listening to us right now, leave us a five-star review. That helps the algorithms. That tells the next person that searches, mm, what's PlayStation doing this week? That's going to show this video or audio much more likely if you do that. Now, on YouTube, if you're listening there, there's multitudes of ways you can help us there. You can like the video. You can comment on the video those are both free ways of doing it you can both subscribe and then hit that notification bell because of course if you subscribe to something right now that doesn't actually mean anything anymore it used to be you could just subscribe to something and the game and, and youtube would be like hey this guy released the video well now that doesn't work anymore because subscriptions are free so you subscribe to everything because why not it's free you don't you don't owe anyone anything you just click subscribe mm-hmm. you have it But now, no one uses the subscription feed anymore. So now we have to now also ask you to hit that little notification bell so you're notified when you actually get a video. Alex, did I cover everything? No, I I didn't. Thank you for asking. Mm -hmm. Patreon.com slash CG Achievers, of course, if you want to help us financially. We only ask if you can afford it or have the means to. Please go over there, Patreon.com slash CG Achievers. Read the tiers. Read the descriptions. Of course, if you use any of the tier systems, that is a free way of interacting with us via the Patreon DM service. I answer all of them. And then there's ways to interact with the show, of course, down in the comments with a, corre- a correction, maybe a comment about the show, how much you like Alex's hairdo. It's very nice today. How much you like my hair. I don't see you guys commenting a lot, so I feel a certain way, but you're always commenting, Alex. It's a little strange, but I won't get on it. Anyways, enough rambling. I want to ask Alex mm. that one question I ask you every single week, and that is, Alex, what mm. have you been playing? Um, so, like I said, I would. I finished GTA San Andreas. Finally. It yes, only took yes, seven, did. eight weeks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it felt long. Uh, played some more Halo. Multiplayer online is so fun. Can't wait for uh, this week for the campaign. In a few days, again, this is the fifth that we're recording. It. She was going to be listening three to this days. on the sixth. So that means in about two days, as if you're listening, we're going to be experiencing Halo Infinite right there with you, and I'm very excited. Oh, I will so also excited. be very excited because in two days as of recording, or a day after this goes live, I'm going to be playing Destiny's 30th anniversary, which looks incredibly fun. So I'm going to have a pretty Elijah two days, right? Destiny, then immediately after that Halo. I mean, come on. Yeah, I'm, I'm there ah. with you, but on my side is Apex because there's a, a, a pirate event. Oh, okay. And That's cool. I'm excited there, for that There's one. a pirate thing in Destiny 2, which is strange. It's almost like they... Yeah. It's weird that they both came out around the same time because the Destiny thing, the cave you go in is apparently pirate-themed. The, uh... Hmm. Uh, what's the... Uh, is, uh... 
Peter Pan, the one with Skull Skull Island, it has like a that has a skull, right? Yes. So picture that. Yeah, Neverland has like a little skull, like a little island, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So picture that, but like in Destiny, there, there's like a little skull cave. It looks like you're gonna go into. Oh, that's cool. And there's cool. like a bunch of pirate stuff inside, like a like like big doubloon stuff. So it looks really cool. Do you get some pirate like armor? I don't know. I don't know if it's just pirate themed. Mm-hmm. But like the cosmetics aren't. I don't know. They've kept this pretty under wraps because they say okay. if you. So they try to keep it very surprising. Yeah, like, so they like all they have said is if you own the anniversary pack. Yeah. You get an additional cosmetic when you do the activity every, assumably every week or however that's supposed to work. So we don't know what those cosmetics are. So we're mm-hmm. getting something when we do the event. I don't know. Very exciting. I I love mysteries. So. Yeah. Um. I have been playing nothing. Pokemon has been the main thing, really. Mm. Um. My wife has been very ill, so I've just been kind of taking care of her. Yeah. So I've been playing Pokemon. I've been playing a lot of Halo and Destiny. I want to play Pokemon, I, but then for uh, as a birthday gift, I got Jurassic World you've been and on that. Mario Party Superstars. Yes. Yes. I I heard you were enjoying so Jurassic World. You were playing that yesterday, right? Yes, yes, I was. I was it was super fun. I played a little bit more today. Get get them dinos in those cages mm. before they kill people. Yeah, of course, of course. Yep. Now, maybe next week you'll have like a little mini review for everyone because yeah, I'm curious if this is like a must buy for like any Jurassic Park lovers out there because the first mm. one was great. I loved it. I could say so far. I like it more than the first one from what I've played already. Oh, already. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's that's exciting. You've only played about four hours, right? Somewhat. Yeah. Somewhat. Okay. So, yeah. So, that's that's yeah. Pro- very promising. Very promising. Yeah. Anyways, Alex. Mm. Enough of that. I want to talk about the news. We don't have much in Rumor Roundup, mostly because this is going to be a meaty show already. So, we weren't going to mm. cover too much else other than these two very, very big co- topics that we have today. Mm. Now, the first one, Alex. It's happened, Alex. It's happened. It finally has happened. All right. Here we are. PlayStation may have a competitor to Game Pass. Not only in the works, but ready to launch in spring. This is, of course, according to a report from Jason Schreier from Bloomberg. Apparently, the project is called Spartacus, and this will, quote, allow PlayStation owners to pay a monthly fee for access to a catalog of modern and classic games, end quote. The service works... Also, seemingly, uh, this service will also seemingly, sorry, uh, be a way of marrying both PlayStation Plus and now PlayStation Now together. Uh, this will be also a way of phasing out PlayStation Now as a brand and only keep Plus. Now, for how the system will work, uh, quote, the first tier would include existing PlayStation Plus benefits. The second would offer a large catalog of PlayStation 4 and eventually PlayStation 5 games. The third tier would add extended demos, game streaming, and a library of classic PS1, PS2, PS3, and PSP games, end quote. There is also no plans to bring any new first-party games to the service, a la the way Xbox does it, where if it's an Xbox Game Studio title, it is guaranteed day one on Xbox, there's currently no plans to, for instance, God of War Ragnarok to launch on this system. They still want you, of course, to pay $60 for that. Hmm. Um, that was the majority of the report. There was a small reference at the bottom that Sony is looking into cloud streaming as well. Just like Xbox has xCloud and now they have the console streaming thing that they're going on. It seems like Sony is also looking into it as well. Although they have already signed that agreement, what was it, two years ago? to agree to use Azure servers for things. So I feel like they've been looking at streaming for a while now because we know they partnered with Microsoft already for the Azure server thing. So, but that was, that was way more than two years ago, actually. That was when, anyways, that's not important. Alex, mm. I want to talk about the service. This is a pretty big deal. Now, we've been saying, will PlayStation have Game Pass for since game pass really launched i mean right we've been like will playstation need to answer this blah blah blah. what do you think of everything i just said i'm hmm. i'm wondering because 
so this is not include this is an additional cost apart from uh playstation plus yeah so unfortunately For, in the report he has no idea of pricing none of plus, his i'm sorry uh playstation like like network the online service like to be the you know how you play the month the uh, the yearly yeah, or monthly okay, service yeah, yeah. so if you that. remember the first tier is playstation plus it seems the first would include existing playstation plus benefits so, assumably, that is what we pay for right now. 60 okay. bucks a year, and you get nothing changes for you. Then we have the second tier would offer a large catalog of PS4 and eventually PS5 games to eventually. assumably download and play. Then we have the third tier, which adds extended demos, game streaming, and a library of classic PS1, PS2, PS3, and PSP games. I mean, the mind wonders how much that's going to cost, right? I mean, that has to be. If we're already, and there's no way Plus is getting cheaper. Unless, no way. Unless they blindside me, and I just I, don't see it coming. My but thing I is, I can picture. It's crazy, because it, like, it says the first one is going to include PlayStation Plus benefits, which yes. is already 60 let's yes, say, for the year. already $60, year. yeah. This is going to be expensive. Si <clears throat> yeah. So the second tier has to be what 70 80 dollars maybe uh, more probably easy because playstation now what is it by itself is 60 bucks for a year right so yeah. assumably mm, you get second, half of yeah. ps now so yeah i could see it being like 80 get, bucks yeah. and then a hundred dollars to 120 dollars you get the third tier <sighs> say yeah because you well because the second tier says you get a large catalog of ps4 and eventually PS5 games. So I feel yeah. like it's going to... I feel like that one's going to go from... So the first one is 60. I feel like that one's going to go to either 90 or 100 already off the bat. Interesting. Okay. Because so you're almost like the third getting tier is going to be a lot. The third tier... What What do you think? How how much... Ballpark. What do you think? How much? For a year? Between 130 and 150. 130 So, okay. So we have to think... Let's think about this, how we have it existing. Because this is the only way we're really going to figure out how much this thing might cost. So Game Pass Ultimate... It's fifteen bucks a month, right? A month, yeah. So I don't have my. I, here, I got you. Thank you. So fifteen times twelve is like one hundred eighty. Thank you. One hundred eighty bucks a year. That's expensive. Which it is, and then like yeah. So we're, we're, we're so I'm way low. I'm way too low. I'm way so too low. Way, yeah, so we're I'm low. way too low. So so let's say. Hmm. First we. I would assume Honestly, that last year price, might then. be 180 bucks. Yeah, it might probably be the same. Yeah, it might be 15 bucks a month. Or, or it, I mean, do you think they'd go 20 bucks a month? That's they a lot go, of value. They, they, they might go. You, they might go 20 light... because you get PS now. Because they're adding, they're the because they're telling you you're getting. Hmm. I don't know. This is this is this is an interesting question. I I didn't even think about when you talk about pricing. Uh, I. I don't. I don't know. I think. I think. I think they will go twenty, twenty, the uh, twenty a month. Twenty a month. For, I mean, that's a lot of stuff you get. Now we don't know specifics. We don't know how many games. We don't know to what extent you're getting any of these games. We don't know if this is going to be a tiered release where, like, maybe the first few months is PS One, then they get to PS. Uh, we have no idea as of recording any of that information. What does it mean? But, third tier is going to add extended demos. So yeah, are they going to try I, to do the thing what what Abandon is doing, where they <laughs> add de they add their own app and there's a demos to, into no, that? What I'm assuming is that I would assume either like, they're going to have a special betas? third party relationship where they get like early access to demos or something that are longer than what Xbox would get. Or they control this via their internal games, and they ensure each game has like some sort of demo. Hmm. And it's like, hey, hey, he's the here's two hours of the game or something like that, you know. And it's in, it's weird because they're like eventually PS5 games, but then there's no plans for first party games. So you're saying for the PS5 games that are eventually coming are only third party? I think eventually. Uh, well. Uh, well, we have to also think about this. Eventually, for instance, Returnal is going to be on this thing. Eventually. It's just not going to be, like, probably within the first, like, six to a year of the game launch. Mm, okay, so maybe in, like, a year or two that, like, so let's say a year or two after God of War Ragnarok comes out, then they'll add it. Yeah, I could see that. 
Okay. I could see a year, especially for God of War Ragnarok. I think they put a year, um, a year on it. Although they're gonna have to be very clear when they pitch this that they're because clearly they don't want they're they don't want to stop selling you the sixty dollars games. They won't. No, and, for sure. th That's a lot of money. Uh, and they also can't afford the approach that Xbox does, which is just Will they burn, discount it. Just burn money. Do you it's think just, they'll do the thing where they discount it? Like if it start or like if it, if a game leaves, they'll discount it. I could see that. Yeah, 10 20 percent off or something. But what I mean is, I don't think we're gonna see a crazy approach like we are seeing with Game Pass, where Microsoft grabs a lighter, gets money, and just starts burning it. Just it's to get as many games on it as possible. I feel like this is going to be a very metered approach to where, you know, there's going to be a lot of games. I don't want to come across like, like th this thing's going to not have a lot of stuff. I'm just saying, yeah. I think this is going to be a more boutique service versus game pass where almost it's like quantity versus quality. I feel like this is going to be like a quality versus quantity kind of thing. Where like you're going to have a good bit of PS4 games, PS5 games. There's not going to be a lot. There's going to be a good bit, but you're really going to join the service to be able to play your PS1, 2, 3 games. Because let's not forget, the only way we can play Infinite right library. now, I'm not saying everybody. And they're not saying all of them. They're just saying a library. So I'm assuming yeah, we don't know. So the first ones are going to be like the very specific ones. We can assume if Sony has made it slash publish the game probably going to be on the service yeah infamous probably going to be on the service you know there's the original certain, final fantasies uh yeah they, they might have some deal with square to put some final fantasies on Maybe. there who knows um that because they they love paying square PSP for final games fantasies. really yeah, PSP, right? I mean, you can bring the God of War games that are stranded there. Yeah. Even though, eh, no, technically they were made in that collection. That's not yeah. true. They're not stranded there. But you can bring those God of War games. What sucks is, Alex, and you, I, I know you're with me on this, no Vita. No talk of Vita. And I know because a lot of the games had some touch screen garbage, but you got to start, start porting those games. Do not let those games die, please, for the love of God. Anyways, uh, uh, off the soapbox, off the soapbox, but... But Alex, this this is a pretty big deal. I I, I, I don't understand it either. By the way, the PlayStation Spartacus it would be a rebrand, not a Game Pass competitor. Yeah. So this is so, a opinion piece by, um, gentleman Paul Tassi. I put this in here, uh, that I might reference. Although I don't, I I read over it again and I was like, mm, there's nothing really here. I I, I really want to point out. Uh, Achievers, if you want to go go to Forbes, Paul Tassi writes, um, PlayStation Spartacus would be a rebrand, not a Game Pass competitor. What he means by this is he's he expounds on the belief that he they don't he they, yes they're making kind of a Game Pass competitor, but what he really is trying to mean is they're trying to rebrand PS Now into something like people will pay for. I believe is what he really means, and having PlayStation Plus as more of like the uh, kind of thing that you know of, like the the thing yeah. you think of when PlayStation. You when you get PlayStation, you want PlayStation Plus because it has X Y Z. It has <clears throat> your PS2 game that you love from two thousand like one or something like that. Yeah, but that but that is an interesting opinion piece again. Forbes and um, Paul Tassi writes um, that if you want to go give that a read. I thought it was a very interesting point. I don't know if I agree. Because it definitely is a Game Pass competitor, but that wasn't really his thesis. Although the headline does kind of point you to that direction. Yeah. Anyways, um, but yeah, w yeah, we are. We talked pricing. We talked thought. I are you surprised, Alex? No, I I figured they were gonna try to do something. Why do you think it took them this long? Um, I mean, let's think about it. Game Pass launched. Let's, let's I feel six. like I, I'm, it's hard. It's bad to say, but I feel like PlayStation just didn't want to be that people be like, oh, we're not going to do it now because we don't want to be like we want. We don't want to seem like we're copying. Like we're copying. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I actually agree. And also, they didn't need to. Right. Uh, June, June 9th, 2019. OK, so they've had. Wait. What? That's Game Pass? True. No, that's not true. This is for the PC version. Anyways. Um, oh, I think it was 2017. 
is when Game Pass came. Yes. Yeah, 2017. Yeah. If, if February, uh, um, they, they announced Game Pass in February, and then it, yeah, later this yeah. quarter it came out. Yep. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I kind of agree. I think they wanted to make a service for PlayStation and not PlayStation's Game Pass. And I, I think I agree. I think that's why they took so much time with this. I think it almost comes across as begrudgingly. You know what I mean, Alex? Like, fine, we'll do it. You know what I mean? We'll like, I don't think they want to particularly do this. Um, I think they feel like they're forced to answer to Game Pass in some way. That I think yeah. that's why we saw the PS Collection when PS5 came out. So they could at least argue... Uh, because Xbox was saying like, oh, this is the biggest launch library of any system ever because of Game yeah. Pass, I guess. And I, and I think that was their answer to that. And now they're looking to be like, all right, well, they keep they can keep saying they have Game Pass like 10 bucks a month or whatever, and they can keep getting these games. We have an answer now on our service. You play for plus uh, just a little bit more money will get you all these PS4 games. And then eventually we'll give you PS5 games. Yeah. This also does not detail any changes to the existing PlayStation Plus service achievers. So I don't think we have to be worried there. I do not think our free games are going anywhere every month. Free in quotes. Of course, you have to pay for Plus to get it. But well, they just added the VR games, so I mean that would be like yeah. Be like, I, oh, I don't, I don't think I don't think Plus is changing in any way aside from the added benefits that's that is going to have and again it looks like playstation now is going to the wayside versus what we have now do you think this is going to be an optional upgrade unlike um well i guess i guess game pass ultimate i game pass ultimate option option. yeah you didn't have to do that yeah do you well do you think this will be optional too or do you think they're gonna convert you no matter what like it like no matter what you're gonna have Spartacus Tier One. If you have just a standard PlayStation Plus, that's Spartacus Tier One automatically. Or do you think this is going to be a separate thing? Well, Spartacus Tier One is PlayStation Plus. No, no I'm saying I know. I'm saying like like anybody who has just PlayStation Plus okay. who, who just have it, they're automatically getting converted to Tier One. And then if they want to upgrade, they can. But if not, they just stay at Tier One. Or do you think they're going to be like, oh? You can have PlayStation Plus, or you can sign up for Spartacus, and you you'll have, you'll be at tier one, and then you can upgrade. I think this is the new service going forward because if so you don't want, if you want nothing, Spartacus. yeah, if you don't, well, that that's not going to be the name, but if, no, I, if, I, I'm just calling I know, it. I know, but I think nothing is going to change for someone who does not want to pay any more money than they do right now. If you do not yeah. want to pay anything and you want nothing to change, assumably, nothing is going to change. You're going yeah. to be PlayStation Plus Tier 1. And if you want to upgrade to PlayStation Plus Tier 2, assumably you pay more money. The interesting part is what happens if you have five years of Plus or something like that? Do yeah. you get it converted, like converted. Yeah. time? I assume you do. Uh, do they give you like a big discount on it? Are they going to do the Xbox thing where they're like, one time thing we'll do it this year and you pay 10 bucks and we'll convert all your time to the highest tier yeah maybe they'll do something like that i don't know i don't know alex so stop asking right Mm. (laughs) any any last comments i I really quick i do want to quickly bring up um i'm very happy we're getting backwards compatibility on playstation it is about time. Finally. It is about I can time. I finish Infamous. We can finally go back to Infamous. We can finally go play some other games. We can... Why is my light on? Uh, we can go back to some PS2 games that I loved. I, I cannot some trophies. wait. Yeah, yeah, more... Tr- hopefully... Oh, my God. If they add trophies to these... Well, of course, the PS3 games will have trophies. Of course. I meant PS2. And, uh, yeah, yeah. PS3 I, I, don't know if I don't think they'll do that. They, might, they probably won't, but it'd be really cool, though. Yeah. I mean, you saw they barely it took them this long to get backwards compatibility. They, I'm sure they don't want to. They don't want to support stuff that's older. All right, Alex. Mm. The Game Awards is coming soon. Yes, it is. Now, the Game Awards is every year around December. Of course, achievers, you you know this. They have this big award show and stuff. So we're gonna go over. 
uh, some predictions we might have that might be announced. We're going to go over some of the big game awards and we're going to kind of predict the winners. But something happened over the week and it would kind of be pretty glaring if we didn't go over it. So I'm going to quickly go over this. Um, and Alex, you can comment on this if you'd like. But we're going to get in this real quick. So Ooh. before we get into the video game award nominees, something happened over the last few days we're going to have to cover. Jeff Keighley had an interview with the Washington Post. He detailed multiple things, like what you can expect at the show, who's going to be there, as well as his thoughts on some of the games he played this year. But the main thing that brought him into the public discourse was a specific quote he gave about the well-known current lawsuit on Activision Blizzard. Quote, And this is the quote, of course, from the Washington Post. Quote, we want to support employees and developers. This is him answering, what do you think of that situation? What do you think of the Blizzard Activision situation? What do you think? uh, Did it affect the show in any way? Kind of like a, this is a very weird article. You can can clearly tell it was like, like they asked him a couple questions and like put it all together in like one kind of paragraph section. It It was really weird. I like the, Alex, I like the interview where... Question, answer. I like those. Yeah, no, this for was sure. a strange like. I he, he went on to talk about this, and, and it's like just say what he said. Anyways, yeah. Quote: We want to support employees and developers," said Keeley, who added he supported people coming forward with their stories, but also didn't want to diminish developers' opportunities to spotlight their games. We have to think very carefully about how we proceed here. Clearly, after about a day of, uh, and this is the end of the, that, that is everything he said in that article about that situation. And then Keely, after a day, after, yeah, it was about a day. I think, I think it was like noon the next day. Uh, multiple prominent people called him out, uh, for the supposed fence sitting he was doing with this specific quote. And then he went to tweet this. Beyond its nominations, I can confirm that Activision Blizzard will not be a part of this year's Game Awards. It is a time of celebration for this industry, the biggest form of entertainment in the world. There is no place for abuse, harassment, or predatory practices in any company or any community. I also realize we have a big platform which we can accelerate and inspire change. We're committed to that, but we all need to work together to build a better and more inclusive environment so everyone feels safe to build the world's best games. All of us are accountable to the standard, incredible games, and the talented developers who build them are who we want to celebrate. See you on Thursday. And that's basically how this situation ended. Alex, I'm going to say a couple things really quickly. But very, very quick, I want to preface this. Um, I think Jess Keeley seems like a nice guy. Uh, he seems like a pretty decent dude. Um, I've been watching him since I was... Alex, oh my God, I, what I've been we've been watching him since the Spike Award Awards. That was in twenty like eleven, right? When it was on G four and everything. Oh, no, no, it wasn't on G four. It was on Spike TV. That was a long time Last, ago. Was it? Wasn't it? Wasn't it called the VGAs? It, no, this is the VGAs. It was the. Oh, it was called the, the Spike VGAs. Game That's Awards. Right. That's right. I believe is what it was called. So I've been watching him for almost. I mean, damn, I mean, almost 10 years, right? I think that was 2011. Just about. When did that launch? I think Let's he's been see. a part of that since it was live. Uh, The final, I think the final show was in 2013. 2013. It was so, hosted by, we'll by Joe So yeah. I've been following him for about eight years of him doing this kind of Game Awards X thing. Well, and that and was the last did, one. Yeah, that was the last one I know. But let's just say yeah. for, for the benefit of them. Yeah. Um. So I've been following him for a while. I think he's a very cool dude. Uh, I've I how do I word this? I liked him a lot back then uh, because he's a very hype man. He mm. has a very way of describing stuff. He's a lot like a circus showman. You know what I mean, Alex? Like he's very mm. like uh, animated with the way he shows games, and you can tell he's very passionate about these things. And I also like the Game Awards. I love the Game Awards. It is a really cool kind of event that happens that we all get to celebrate. But um, I also don't for, don't let myself forget that this is like a giant marketing campaign, essentially. Um, this isn't quite like the Oscars. Um, Alex, do you watch the Oscars or the Grammys or anything like that? I, I have before. You have before, so you understand what I mean. Yeah. This isn't yes. quite the Oscars because... Quentin Tarantino doesn't come out and go, all right, let's show my new game. You know, yep. like it, this is 
much more marketing than it is award show. Yeah. Um, people don't go to the Oscars excited to see new trailers. So I, in the back of my head, when I watch this, I am having a good time because I just like oh, being, oh, people getting awards and being recognized. Yeah. But also in the back of my head, I go, this is all a bunch of marketing, basically. Yeah, it's like, it's like a little mini conference. So Yeah, it's essentially a little conference that happens at the end of the year, and he gets to show, like, look at all the cool stuff I have. I, have an or- I love the orchestra every year. All those things. Love that shit. Oh, yeah. Love that shit. Now, everyone following this quote, again, I want to reread the quote. Quote, we want to support employees and developers. Um, we have to think very carefully about how we proceed here. And um, that's essentially everything he says in the, the article. And I want to say I found it very interesting that everyone very quickly jumped onto him from this kind of lukewarm quote to this entire situation. Now, first off, this situation is horrible. Um, Activision Blizzard is, again, we live in America, so it's instant to prove guilty, but a lot of their shit's pretty damning about what they're being accused of. And uh, to make matters worse is they were not paying a woman in the exact same position a man was in. Mm. So you can already read between the lines and a bunch of other things. If that's true, what the hell else is true? That being said, seemed like a lot of people jumped down this man's throat for seemingly something that, I don't know, wasn't a huge, huge deal. What do you think, Alex? Am I, am I not seeing this correctly? Yeah, I mean, you have, like, uh, I think I, uh, when uh, we spoke about it, I, I had said, when it cut, this is a very, very uh, touchy subject. Of course, it is. So yeah, you, this is you, about you, you, sexual you have harassment. To be, this is pretty yeah, you have to be horrible. Be careful shit. what you say, because even if, even if you say the right thing, but, like, maybe with the wrong word, yes. it, it could, it could mess you up yeah but like, I, will, I, will, yeah. I also say this jeff Keeley is a very smart guy um clearly yeah. right he's very successful um seemingly he's rich i don't know but seemingly yeah. he's pretty smart very shocked that he did catch himself on this um yeah i mean he knew i mean you knew you were going to be asked this question Keeley. so i'm yeah. curious why you didn't have a prepared statement in your head i definitely like a lot it. better than this um so that's that's a little strange that being said though um, I want to say Kotaku specifically is kind of the harbinger of this entire situation. Did you mm-hmm. see the article they wrote? Uh, no. So they headlined the article, um, Jeff Keighley uh, doesn't want to take sides, basically, in this. And that's what mm. he said. And I feel like that added a lot of to the storm because there was a lot of quote tweets on Twitter. Saying, oh my god, Jeff Keeley's a fucking monster now. You know, like, just a bunch of that stuff. And I was like, interesting. It's, it's just, I find it very interesting how quickly shit turns. Because oh, like, yeah. three months ago, if you would have asked me, like, do people like Jeff Keeley? I'd be like, yeah, yeah, they, you know, a lot of people. But then they hear this, and they, it seems like fucking on a turn of a coin, like, everyone, like, snapped at his ass. For, assumably, we assume he has good con- intent right like you assume keely yeah. does not say is not saying i like money so i want to make money so i want to make money off of activision maybe that is what he's saying but i don't think that was his intent no uh i think definitely I, was not his intent. yeah i do not think he uh meant anything by this quote but it was very strange after these last few days seeing like everyone like really kind of jump on him i don't know i don't know I think people are still trying to find somebody to blame. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Because. Nobody's taking the fall for it, man. Yeah. I mean, it was just so. It was just. It was just really peculiar. I mean, because if. When I think of one person that's. That seemingly is like the neutral party is Jeff Keighley because like he likes making them. uh, He he makes all the marketing and stuff. But I forgot what it was. It was an article or something. He said the head of the was a Blizzard or Activision said he was stepped down if they did something. Oh, that was Bobby Kotick. Yeah. So that that's a a, an older tweet from about uh, about two weeks ago. He was quoted saying to someone internally that he would leave if the culture doesn't change. Doesn't change. Yeah. Um. He said he would which, leave immediately, which is uh, which is like I, 
are you missing i think you're missing the point there buddy yeah <laughs> but, exactly. yeah that was bobby kotick um yeah i yeah he that was an interesting quote to read because i was like uh is he fucking with us or does he really not know i don't know I don't know, but yeah, I just I wanted to bring up because it would be kind of weird if we talked about the Game Awards, but didn't bring up like no, no, his pretty shitty last this. two days. I mean, this guy yeah, had yeah. a pretty shitty last two days because of this. Yeah. So, Achievers, let me know what you guys thought of the situation. Um, am I like taking this like way too low? Should I be angry? I just, when I read his original quote, I was like, because I, I actually saw Maybe. the Kotaku article first and I went, oh, did this motherfucker really like... No, nah, I mean, I think wish- he... <laughs> I think he just uh he was probably in that moment he was like I probably he probably should have said something better but I don't think he meant it anything like in no, a bad no. way. I think it, I think it's clear Jeff Keighley's intent. It yeah. was not to go like Yeah, no. I think he know, I think I, yes, I, of course there's words way better that could be used, but yeah. yeah. No, I think he I think I'm I'm fine with him. We all know where he stands. I mean, obviously, they're not even going to be at the Game Awards. Yeah, and I did also want to bring about, um, uh, and let's not forget, he did mention they're not going to be at the award show. Yeah. Which, I mean, that's, I mean, good, because you can't, you can't. I mean, which is, a, which, is, well, which is a big thing, too. I mean, like, yeah. I mean, the Activision Blizzard, not going to be there. That's crazy. Yeah, it is, it is. And I was just rereading to make sure, because I... Yeah, that is his quote. Every time I read the quote, I think like that I must be missing something, but I'm not. That is what he said, and they just got really mad at him. Yeah. Anyways, let's move on. Nominees. Nominees for the Game Awards show, Alex. Now, I started... Basically, I did a write-up of all the nominees, Alex. I wrote them out on this Google Doc. Okay. We read from the show every week. A little peek behind the curtain, Achievers. A little peek. We should probably start from the bottom going up. You agree? As in... So all the, the way bottom. at the bottom here, yeah. Best yeah, sports should, racing game. The, that sound better? Make the last one game of yeah. the year? Let's do, let's yeah, do for, that. Yeah, let's do that. Best, best sports racing... Best sports slash racing game. First off, these should be two separate categories. Don't know why these are the same. Lame. F1 2021, FIFA 2022, Forza Horizon 5, Hot Wheels Unleashed, and Riders Republic. Pretty easy choice, I think, for me, at least. For sure, or for the Rise of Five. Yes, me too. I give kudos to Hot Wheels coming out so soon and still making the board. I'm not gonna lie, I'm, I'm be honest. I'm surprised it got nominated. That's what I'm saying. Be, I'm I mean, it, dude, from what I played, it was pretty fun. It's pretty fun. It's clear that you're supposed to spend money though. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. It's like a lot of money though. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Best multiplayer. This is. I'm, I'm very excited to talk to you about. Best multiplayer. Back for Blood, Knockout City, It Takes Two, Monster Hunter Rise, New World, Valheim. Easy choice for me, but I do think, I do not think they will win. What do you think? Uh, what my, like, what mine what, is? What's your pick? And then we could talk about who's going to well, win. My, well, my pick, of course, It Takes Two. And mine too. So It Takes Two, yeah. I think, is the best multiplayer by far on this list. But yeah. I, do I think, think it, I don't think win, win. I do not. I think feel like win. I feel like New World is gonna win. I feel like New World's gonna win. I feel like actually Monster Hunter Rise might win because New World's kind of fallen off a cliff. Yeah, and when Team Valheim of, was was early, so like I haven't yeah. seen any. I haven't really heard anything much about it. It started falling out. Yeah, I think Monster Hunter Rise might be just that fan base is so rabid. Oh, is it really high? They they Monster Hunter fans are like a huge. Now again, this is voted by. Um, journalists i guess and mm-hmm. journalists and like i guess you could call them influencers i don't know what you want to call it's all, them. it's all the top media people yeah uh, like i saw a list of them and it's just but kind of funny of, and, and people like that yeah. get a vote so like yeah. they're not all He's journalists saw them and, uh, you know anyways best fighting game demon slayer guilty gear strive melty blood nickelodeon all Souls brawl virtual virtua fighter 5 uh I don't really care who wins. Honestly, I would just love Nickelodeon All Stars Brawl to win, just f- to f- fucking watch the world burn. It's weird because did Virtual Fighter Five come out this year, or has it been out for a while? Oh, I don't remember. I th- Let's see. For some reason, I want to say it came out in March. I don't know why I want to say that. It's probably wrong. 
What, what is Virtual it? Fighter 5 release date. Wait, what? No way. Virtual Fighter 5, November 26, 2005? Um, I'm sorry, this there's is a, a way longer name to this. It's like There's a re-release, right? Yeah. It, yeah there's, there's, a, there's a PS4. colon after this. I just don't remember what it is. Oh, ultimate, was it the Ultimate Showdown? Yeah, yes, yes. Ultimate Showdown, gotcha, okay. I was about to say, because this game is from 2005. No, no, no. Because no, I was going to say, I'm, I'm surprised that Smash is not on here, if that's the case. Uh, I, I don't know. I can't give it to anybody because I, I've never I don't played any of these. Any of these. I had this yeah. here for a specific reason, but that reason I've didn't heard, work out. I've, I have heard Demon Slayer is really good. I did hear Demon Slayer is good. I think Guilty yeah. Gear will, will win, though. Best role-playing yeah. game. Something we actually talk about. Cyberpunk 2077, Monster mm. Hunter Rise, Scarlet Nexus, Shimigami Tensei 5, Tales of Arise. I'm going to be very clear about this. I don't mean this to be mean. Why is Cyberpunk on this? Be, dude, the Why is Cyberpunk amount, on this? Dude, it the didn't, amount of people that it, really love this game. It didn't work. It should dude, not some, be allowed to be for nominated. For some people, like, they it love It did not work. It, that is a little insane. Some some people so many people have platinum this game. Some people have thousands. This was this game. nominated. This is a that's a this was taken off storefronts because it was so, so broken. I saw an article. I saw PlayStation article. took I this s- off their storefront for six months, and we're like, I yeah, saw, just nominated. I saw a tweet that somebody said that this game is their go-to game when they want to chill. Like they just like like when they like their what is I'm it? Not, I'm not trying to control what people like. I'm not saying people shouldn't like Cyberpunk. I'm just, I, just, I think it's a little strange that... I mean, I, I played it. I, I, I'm not saying it's a great, amazing game. Yeah, it was I, fine. Achievers, I, I, that might have come across I, a specific way. I, I do not, I'm not saying you can't like the game. But, like, these, this award shows should have, a, like, a, at least a little bit of integrity. Yeah. Maybe we shouldn't award a show for being the most broken game in a long time. That's all I'm saying. That being said, this game, I feel like they're not even, like the amount of times that the update even is being delayed. Like, there's so much stuff. Again, I do not want to. I don't care if you like it. I'm just saying, maybe we shouldn't nominate one of the most broken games we've all played in a very long time. Anyways, I'm in the weeds. I give it to Tails. I give it to Tails as well. Easy for me. Fucking amazing. I do want to play Shingo Megami Tensei Five because I heard it's really good. Uh, I feel like it's Nexus, so much I, like Persona. It, it, I mean, well, this was this is actually before Persona, which is hilarious. Persona, yeah, yeah. So, um, but Scarlet Nexus, I couldn't really get into. I couldn't, um, I couldn't get into it either, yeah, dude. I loved the art, fighting style, but everything else yeah. was annoying me. <clears throat> Best action adventure game, Guardians of the Galaxy, Metroid Dread, Psychonauts 2, Ratchet and Click Rift Apart, Resident Evil Village. You know what? You're going to be surprised. Guardians of the Galaxy for me. I was going to say, you know what? I think I'm going to have to give it to Guardians. It would be, it would be seen Guardians and Metroid Dread. And I think I enjoyed Guardians a, a little bit more. But not I, by I, much. I, this is pretty I close. I have to give it to Guardians. Yeah, I give it to Guardians. I played, I, I played all of these. Do you think and they're, they're going to win? Guardians? <clears throat> I think so. I don't. I think Metroid Dread will. Um, Best oh, action game. Yeah. Back for Blood, Chivalry 2, Deathloop, Far Cry 6, Returnal. By the way, get fucking used to hearing Deathloop. Anyways, Back for Blood, Chivalry 2, Deathloop, Far Cry 6, Returnal. Best action game, Returnal. Best action game, Returnal? Yeah, by far. I don't think it's anywhere close. What do you think? I think, I think Deathloop. <sighs> action? You doing a lot of action in Deathloop? I am. That's true. It is your <laughs> play style, I guess. I don't know. It, yeah. It's Returnal for me, easily. It, it, like the combat in Returnal is one of the best combat I've played in a long time. Yeah. Fucking phenomenal. Um, I'm not going back to that game. Uh, best <laughs> indie: Twelve Minutes, which what? Death Store, Inscription, Kenna Bridge of Spirits, Loop Hero. I gave a shout out to Kenna, but I'm gonna give it to Death Store. Death Store, easily. First off, why is Twelve <clears throat> yeah. Minutes nominated? Fuck. I think uh, it's because of the uh, they had the big actors the in it, man. It's the hype. it's the hype. It's yeah, the hype. that's all this is. That's why I like. I that's why I, I like. I'm not gonna say it. Uh, I <sighs> Death, Death Store. I enjoyed a lot. Um, it's, it's probably 
I mean, it's gonna be. I mean, it's gonna be up there on my game of the year list. So yeah, yeah it's just a little sneak peek, achievers. I loved that game, so I can't wait. I do need to play Kenna. I will admit, I have not played that game, so I yeah. need to play it, uh, especially for my game of the year list. I need to be ready for that. Sorry, yep. sorry, achiever. I've been off this mic. I need to get a little closer to this. Best ongoing game: Apex Legends, Final Fantasy fourteen Online, Fortnite, Genshin Impact, Call of Duty Warzone. I don't care about this one. I would probably say Final Fantasy fourteen will win it, probably pretty easily. I'm gonna say either that or Genshin because Genshin's been really hyped lately. Genshin's been huge, although I hear a lot of people complain about it. But I is it? But we, yeah, but I don't know if it's like the standard complain where like gotcha. I mean everyone complains about every game. So like I don't know if it's just like normal. But mm. that but Final Fantasy fourteen is so good it's become a meme about how good it is you know what i mean it bothers me because i want to play it but you have to pay and i wish they would do the thing where it's free to play to like level 20 and like what all like wow does and star wars does really? and then i could just play it till then it is free to play till level 60 i thought it is now no. yeah oh, it is now yeah mm -hmm. because when i tried to play it before i had to pay 20 dollars a month no matter what no you no you can play for free for till level 60 you want to you want to go play it? That's the meme. The meme is um uh have you checked out Final Fantasy X thing? You can now play for free to level 6 like there's a meme about it now. That's the only yeah. reason I know that. That's actually tempting. That's actually tempting to go to play it because I yeah, I did I not want to go to it because I had to pay. I would love to try the game again. Yeah. I I can't right right, right now. Maybe this no, is no, a January no. game. January I'm, game? Half ending December after we're done with Halo and everything, we'll try it out. Okay, that sounds good. Um, yeah, but I think that's uh, our... I think Final Fantasy fourteen is gonna win. What do you think? I yeah, I think that's gonna win. I mean, of course, you know, I love Apex, uh, but uh, I'm gonna. I think Final Fantasy will win. Yeah, me too. Best performance. This mm. is my favorite uh, category almost every year. This one was hard. Um, uh, not for me. <laughs> Erica Mori as not for, not for me, but I mean, like for like people that I think is gonna win. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah. that's a good point. Giancarlo yeah. Esposito as Aston Castillo. Jason yep. Kelly as Colt Vaughn. Maggie Robertson as Lady Dimitrescu. Alex, you're going to... Izioma. Izioma Akaga. Akaga? 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 Yeah. As Juliana Blake. If you're listening, I'm so sorry, Izioma. Yeah, so sorry. sorry. Yeah. I'm so sorry. I, I destroyed that. Uh, beautiful name, though. I love that. I love, I love that. that. Yeah, oh, yeah. But, uh, I love that. For, so my personal choice is Alex Chen. Um, I love that character. Love her. Love her. I love that character. Who I yeah. think will win? John Carl Esposito because he's the most recognizable name on here, which happens yeah. every single year. Last year, it was the fuck from Death Stranding. Yep. I was going to say this. Oh, you, <laughs> you thought about Norma Reedus? Nope. The other one. Oh, uh, the villain. What's his name? Blonde hair. He's in movies. What? Blonde hair dude? He's in movies. You mean Mads Mickelson? Yes, Mads Mickelson. You mean the white hair dude? That's white. He has a white hair. I, I think you're talking about Troy Baker. No, no. Um, but yeah, no, I think I think uh, Giancarlo Esposito will win. I did pick Alex Chen as well. Yeah, I want Alex Chen to win. She's not going to. John Carlo will. Yeah. Because you fuckers will vote. For someone you just recognize, and it's annoying. No, I'm saying like he is doing a good job because I, I went back to Far Cry and like I was, no, his he, cutscenes his, is intimidating. It's great. He's a no, great he actor. did a great job. It's just Alex he, Chen is. He makes the game. If he wasn't in the game, I probably would be playing the game. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie to you. Best audio design. I love. The, I love this one too. Death Loop, Forza Horizon Five, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, Resident Evil Village, Returnal. I, I have to give it. I always give it the Forza. Forza is incredible audio design. The, the, with, yeah, the the no, the 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 way they can get those engines so perfect, it's awesome. Yeah, I, and I know achievers are like, is doesn't it just sound like an engine? If you if I turn three different cars on, you'll know they're three different cars. Yep. Like that's like the, I can tell. Even yeah, if you don't know are. cars, you'll know they're different cars. Yeah, and like exactly. if you and if you put it on like and I'm sure there's some car expert out there that if I turn one on, he's like, oh yeah, that's a that sounds like a Nissan engine, so like shit like that. Yep. Like it's that good. And also this the I know this isn't music, it's audio design, but like the music's really good too. Yeah, 
Best score in music. The Artful Escape, Cyberpunk 2077, Deathloop, Guardians of the Galaxy, Near Replicant. Easy for me. I'm upset because I've heard Artful Escape is really good. I did too. I, didn't I, get, have not I didn't get a chance to play that. But I do need yeah. to play that. I'll try to play it before game of the year. But yeah, Guardians. I give it to Guardians because I love that soundtrack. Guardians is an incredible soundtrack. I had downloaded the soundtrack on Spotify. It's awesome. Best art direction. Oh, who do you think will win? Oh, who uh, best score in music? I think Guardians will. I think Guardians. Best art direction. Artful Escape, Deathloop, Kenna Bridge of Spirits. I think Artful Escape is going to win music just because it's... Uh, I, it was a big uh, thing. I was like, "Oh, it's great in music." So it's it's a it's rivalry on those two. Ken and Bridge of Spirits, Psychonauts two, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Art direction. <sighs> this is a hard one. I want to say Psychonauts two, honestly. <sighs> um, but again, I have not played Artful Escape. It would be between Ken and Bridge of Spirits and Psychonauts because the art direction in both those games are phenomenal. I want to say Psychonauts two though because it is the art direction is insane the little bit i've played i've played like the first three four levels it is incredible looking i love it i'm probably gonna say art for escape okay (laughs) best narrative death loop it takes two life is strange true colors guardians of the galaxy psychonauts 2 this is the first time it makes me think for a little while i i I mean i have two I i mean i could like it's just i have to Best narrative is It Takes Two or Life is Strange. I agree. Yeah. Also, who's <sighs> voting Deathloop as best narrative? Tell me one thing about that story, you fucks. One thing. Rant over. Exactly. Um, I'm gonna give it... Ugh. It, it takes, takes two. two and Life is Strange are such great narratives. I I had to take it to it takes two because it's, it's beautiful. E- even in like just like in narrative, I like the whole concept of it throughout the whole game. But every individual narrative of every mission is so different. I'm just like I love it. So it takes two. Oh, the, see, this is strange. It's hard. It, 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 and. It takes two wins, I think, a little bit because it's something I experienced with my wife, too. That's exactly why. So it's why. hard yeah. to even separate the feeling because you have the feeling of your wife I connected with playing. It Takes Two yeah. way more. Yeah. It's very close, but I probably give it to It Takes Two. Mm. Although it's I, just crazy because I did connect with True Colors, but like I also, I, but I connected way I mean, it's, more. It's like, with it's, it. like what? it's like this. It's yeah. Like, it's like this. I don't know. I life uh, it takes you I'll say it takes you because the next three I mean best game direction <sighs> Deathloop it takes two Returnal Psychonauts 2 Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart now Alex really quick while you think I'm going to look up it's the same it's game, it, it takes game it's, it takes two well, I'm going to look up Game Awards because I want to read their definition of this category. Game Direction. Because Game Direction is a very broad. So I want to see okay. what specifically they mean by Game Direction. <laughs> um, but right now, off the top of my head, I'm, I'm looking at... First off, Metroid Dread needs to be on here because the Game Direction, that's phenomenal. Um, I'm looking at... I mean, I'm looking at It Takes Two. I'm assuming Game Direction is meaning by how the game plays. Is it not? Like how the controls and how everything is like game how everything is directed. Should be how is it how good as the way I think about it, how good is it to pointing you in the direction of the game. Let's okay. see. Let's see. Um, it's loading and I can read there. Okay, so awarded for outstanding creative vision and innovation in game direction and game design. So game direction and game design. Hold hands. Those are two similar things. So what is the yeah. most well-designed game? I think It Takes Two. It, it, it takes, takes Two design is phenomenal. The it is great at teaching can, people who oh. aren't f- incredible at video games. Yeah. And newer to video games, i.e. my wife. She plays a lot of games, but she does not play as many games as I do. And she's able to pick up like that. 
immediately. She mm-hmm. knows exactly what to do. She know she is helping me the entire time. You never have to do the thing of oh, babe, it's over here, like it's stuff like that. Like she no, she knows yeah, her sure. she knows her game, so she's not like she's not a blank slate by no means. But this could have been challenging, and it isn't. I think it takes two by far as the best game direction. I, and I Same. honestly don't think it's anywhere close to any of these games. Like I don't think any game is anywhere close. No, I agree. Maybe, maybe you can make a, a case for Ratchet and Clank, and maybe Psychonauts, maybe. But and Return of this have really good game design. But I mean, come on. Here it is. Now, of course, this isn't every category because we'd be here for days. But this is a lot of them, and this is the big one: Game of the Year. So, Alex, Game of the Year. This is your Game of the Year for 2021, everyone. Out of this list. Deathloop. I'm going to say that again. Deathloop. It Takes Two. Metroid Dread. Psychonauts 2. Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Resident Evil Village. This is the list. This, this is the list they gave. This is the list. My my, I feel like my game of the year <laughs> is not even on this list. Mine isn't. <laughs> my first three aren't. <laughs> I think. Um, I don't know. Man, no Forza Horizon Five, which is a phenomenal Ooh. game. Definitely I better think, than Resident Evil Village. I think it was. I, I feel like with that one, I think it was too much of a. It was. It, it it's too came recent. Out too I know it's too recent, but st- but. Alex, you bring up the point I wanted to bring up. Alex, why do we do our game of the year uh, choice in January? Why do we do that? So we've played all the games that come out for that year. Thank you. Now, why, Alex, do we plan better than a multi-million dollar production that happens every year? Why do we have these unnecessary restrictions on game of the year? Like Halo know, isn't we, out. Like we know we know nothing comes out in January. Why not change it to then? Halo that is not always out, the best So time. it can't do it here. So it gets nominated for next year's game of the year. That doesn't make any fucking sense. Second, <sighs> this happened last year with Cyberpunk. Who gives a shit? Still though. And then the year before that, it was... Fuck, there was another game that was, like, really big. Doesn't matter. Anyways, why do they do this? Why do they keep doing this? It's annoying. If you're going to be try to take yourself seriously, which I know they want to be, then why do you have these arbitrary dates? It doesn't have to be in December. Make it December 31st or something. I don't know. But it's weird. Fucking weird. Also, I didn't play it. Alex, where the fuck is Hitman 3 in any of this list? Obviously, it wasn't a good game to people. But Alex, that got like almost 10s from every outlet. I think they got 9s. Yeah. yeah, outlets. Let's sure. Yeah, yeah. So like... what? Where's Obviously, Hitman it's a 3? Lie. That's shocking. And honestly, that, that tells us there's a, a little bit of um, the recency bias, which we've known for a long time. That it, it just it's just not on people's minds. Games that come out in January, February, no one gives yeah. a shit about them in December. That's just... Oh, is, for sure, yeah. That's just how it goes. Yeah, literally, it's only games that would come out literally in last between six June months. and yep. July yeah, and yeah, the last God. six months. These are, these are the best yeah. game of the years in the last six months. The only thing you can really kind of say is Resident Evil Village. That came out in May, I think. Um, so yeah, this is our game of the year list. Um, I mean, of course, I'm, t- I'm giving it takes, it takes two. I think I give it to... Uh, I want to say Dread, but it's, it takes two. And then who I think will win? I fucking Alex... I, I swear to God, if that think- wins, I will, I will fucking punch through with my TV. I will punch through the TV if if don't if do that. Don't wins. do that. It's an OLED. Don't if, do that. Achievers, I'm just kidding. I don't care that watch much. It, uh, watch it on the old TV. You have it behind you. And okay, watch it on that. Okay, I'll add to that. 
I'm achievers really quickly because I know someone's gonna clip this and throw it at my face later. Well, you ca- I don't I don't really care that much. This is a, this is a big fun whatever the fuck show. It's just annoying that I feel Death like Loop. I'm in a I feel like I'm in a different planet than everyone else when people talk about Death. Like Loop. I enjoyed the game, but it's not game of the year. It's not. To it's, me. not it's not a ten. It's not perfect. This isn't a perfect. No. Ma- Sorry, I'm I'm doing the thing I hate. We roll it back. This is not a masterpiece. This is not like a 10 should be a really fucking big deal. I should be able to give a 10 to anybody and say, play this game and they'll get it. Deathloop is not one of those games. Ugh. Anyways, I want It Takes Two to win. It's not going to. I think (sighs) Metroid Dread will. Alex? If fucking Deathloop wins, <laughs> I'm gonna cry. <laughs> oh, if I'm gonna cry. What do you think will win? Oh, you're gonna say it, aren't you? Oh, you're gonna say it. How about? How about? De- oh I want it to. I I choose it takes two. I know that's not gonna get game of the year. No, it's not. It's not. So uh, it has to be a. It has I to be want. A, a I want a Met- I want Metro Dread to get it, so Deathloop can't. But I know Deathloop is gonna get it. Oh no, you know. Fuck. Yeah. I love Arcane, but like, and I don't. And again, this has come across as us shitting on Deathloop. I don't want it to come across. Yeah, that I way. mean, we can win the game, but but I feel like no. I feel like everyone's lit. Tone it down. Tone it down. Yeah. Like relax. Let's let's, let's remember uh, the it's menu. Not that good. Let's remember the menu. That menu was pretty bad. And then we'll go from there. Woo. All right. We're done with this. Alex, did you have any fun predictions that you think might happen? I have a few. Mm, about like what's going to be shown? Yeah, do you have like any sort of like this might be there? Is it weird that I think I feel like we're gonna see uh, more God of War? Really, PlayStation? Mm-hmm. Hmm. PlayStation? I don't. Do they have a history of being at the show? I don't think they do. They might. Though. Yeah, well, what are they? They might. Eh, I don't know. I think so. What I think they're gonna show is the Bloodborne remake. The Bloodborne remake. Remaster. That'd be awesome. Whatever you want to call it. Yeah. I think they'll announce that. I wouldn't be shocked because we know in December. PlayStation, well, we know, sorry. There's a strong rumor mm-hmm. that the remake from PlayStation is going to be shown in December. Mm. I wouldn't be shocked if it's Bloodborne. We know they're remaking Bloodborne in some capacity. I can't wait. So the only question is, where will we see it and how far is it along? We know it exists. We know there's some sort of remake that might be revealed here. So what better way than Bloodborne? Uh, Alex, I have a few here, if you don't mind me going through these. Go for it. I think there might be a Fable trilogy for Series S and X announced, aside Uh. from a teaser trailer for maybe Fable. Um, Xbox loves this event. They revealed a whole fucking console there. So That's true. We don't... We we can't underestimate how much they like Game Awards. That's true. I won't be shocked if they announce the Fable trilogy for Series S and X. As a f- uh, uh, as a full kind of not remake but large remastering of the games as a and there'll be one whole thing that's coming to Game Pass, uh, for, and it will have both Series S and X announcements and they might do a little teaser for Fable again, um, but uh, I know they're not ready for that. Hideo Ch- uh, Kojima comes out and reveals whatever the fuck this abandoned thing has been all about. Uh, I just want that to happen so we can stop talking about it, <sighs> so it's over. Please. That, that game. Has, uh, uh, if not, J- Jeff Keeley, I know you're watching this. G- get Hassan Karaman out there. Make him talk. Show his face. Show, his, all, show me him. Dude, all they gotta do and is. And he can't show read from a teleprompter. Me. He has to say everything off the top of his head. Yep. Turn it to make him turn around. <laughs> make him t- <laughs> make him wear a blindfold, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> but but for real, I I won't i hope whatever that is is over like whatever that is i want that to be resolved in 
four days as of recording because it's the ninth. Yeah. So, like, please just have that be done. For the love of Christ, let that be over with. And then I already went over the Bloodborne answer. I think those are the. I think those are my locks for you. I'm pretty confident in either one of those being right. I feel like one of those are for sure right. Do you think? Oh shit! We will get some type of announcement about that next acquisition Xbox was talking about. That's been rumored for a long time. I know. But they never confirmed if it was real no, or not, did because they? because that's... Uh, I want to say no. Okay. Only because that seems like a weird thing to announce at a award show. Yeah. Although, again, all this is a huge marketing thing. Let's not forget that. This is mm. a big commercial showing shown to us in the guise of an yeah. award show. But I do think that is a very weird thing to announce. Be like, hey, I'm a big corporation and I bought a fucking studio. Like, I feel like that's for like E3, where like you kind of expect that talk versus well, an award show. To be fair, we would expect you know, a whole system of review as well. At that's E3. different though. That makes that <clears throat> weirdly makes sense. <clears throat> but not that's at it, a, though? Yeah, I yeah. Every uh, gamer, I, I, I can quotes. see Phil coming out, but like, hey, by the way. We've, uh, uh, you can officially play all, I don't know, let's say, let's say Ubisoft games. I'm not saying they're going to buy Ubisoft. I know, I know. But all Ubisoft games on Game Pass now because we own them. <laughs> no, it's just a weird thing. And also, like, the fuckers that work there are there. It's awkward. Like, it's, yeah. I don't think so. I don't think so. That's true. I respect it, but it's, that'd be kind of awkward. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, uh, Achievers, I did hear Bioshock's setting was leaked by one mm. Colin Moriarty. What he uh, apparently he some source told him that it's going to be in the 1950s in Antarctica. I'm going to so call it Bioshock maybe? is on Xbox only. So they bought Take Take Two. I don't know, maybe time exclusive? I don't know. Okay, all right. Nailed it. Anyways, it's called, uh, it might be called Bioshock Isolation, um, which is a separate leak from something else. Um, I don't know. That, that's just something I heard. That might be at the, the show. Interesting. Um, I heard rumors of Hogwarts Legacy. Uh, Ooh, no, no, no. I heard rumors of Avowed. Oh, um, because yeah, apparently, because if you remember, Jez Corden made that report that we reported on like two months ago or something like that. Mm -hmm. And apparently it's um, it's not far along, but it's but it's but it has a lot to show. <clears throat> and um, Obsidian said they will have more to show later on when they reported on that. Mm. So we might see a vowed. Mm. I don't know. I don't have too much for the show, honestly. I, I really, the only thing I'm honestly confident in are those three that I said. Fallout Trilogy, Hideo Jima comes out in just whatever the fuck that abandoned thing is. We just you get think that we'll get with any new trailers for remaster. any of the games that they've showed before? Like let's uh un, like uh, newer IPs. Uh, like you said, Obsidian. So it made me think of Outer Worlds. Like, do you think we'll get some more Outer Worlds two? No, they anything? even admitted in their trailer that they made like to joke yeah, they don't have anything that's hey right. we have nothing but we have a logo dun 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 yeah. like that was an awesome trailer but i think they were being very honest that they don't have shit and that was only like fucking six months ago eight months yeah. ago so well they like do you or do you not i'm not saying that game specifically oh, but do you sorry. think we'll see some do you think we'll see something uh is there anything new from these new games like the new fable the new Mass Effect. Do you think we'll see anything from Mass Effect? Mass Effect, no, because they would have showed us November seventh, where we had ever when they had Evers and Cheshire. The only thing I could see, because Dragon Age Four keeps fucking showing up at Game Awards, Dragon mm. Age Four. Okay. Because if you remember, they've showed there the last two Mass years. Mass Effect Seven. They showed the poster. So the guy that's supposed to look like a Geth or whatever. That was an N Seven day. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That was like, they showed that on N Seven day. Because you said, I thought you just said they didn't show anything. 
But yeah, they didn't show anything. They showed a poster on N Seven Day. That's something. Alex, that's a it's, it's a picture. Look, it's, look, look, nothing is nothing. And a picture. I mean, it, it, it looks like a geth. It could be. Is it Legion? Is it not? It's just another teaser. That's something. All right, I'm sorry. I didn't know you had a low bar with showed something. We don't know anything. We have no idea what any of that is. I mean, I feel like there's a geth involved. I mean, that <laughs> could be something. Anyways. <laughs> Dragon H4, I will not be shocked if it shows up. Okay. So, that honestly is probably the most likely out of everything we've talked about, because that has a history of being at the Game Awards. I think it was announced there. Okay. So, we might, get, we might see Dragon H4. You did want more of that. Please, for the love of God, just don't let it be bad. Bioware? Bioware. Please. They're not going to let you get your inventory. Please. Don't do it. Please. They're going to anthem it. Please don't. Please. They, they, this is they all I have left. Hey, you understand? They, they anthem this, and I'm done with Bioware for good. <sighs> Any last words on the Game Awards? Last time we talked to the Achievers, the awards will happen. Yeah. So, four days, so... Let we'll us know what wins. you thought. <clears throat> tweet at us your thinks. We'll be watching it just along with you. We'll tweet, the, we'll tweet out our thoughts on the show mm. periodically. I can't remember. What time is it again? For the Game Awards? <clears throat> I don't know. 7, 7 p.m. Pacific is off the top of my head. That's probably wrong. You might want to look that up. While you're looking that up, Alex, we've got Game of Pass games to go over. Of course, beginning of every month, we get a little peek at what's coming out for Game Pass, and we read it aloud to you. So, these are the games coming out for Game Pass this month. December 2nd, Avila, uh, Anvil, Cloud and PC, ID at Xbox, available day one with Xbox. Agent Vault Investigation Lab, Anvil, is an agency that searches for remnants of alien civilizations scattered throughout the universe. As a breaker, you'll seek out and explore unknown galaxies. Searching for those ancient alien vaults, each galaxy consists of random planets, unique boss monsters, defeating them, opening these vaults, you'll be able to utilize stunning powers in within. Archfeld, Cloud Console and PC, ID at Xbox, December 2nd. Available on day one with Game Pass. Dive into Bullet Hell with RPG elements where you'll master weapons and skills needed to overcome the diverse enemies that await you throughout an ever-changing world. Only by conquering these evil forces will you uncover the truth about the long-fabled Archvale. Final Fantasy 13 2 Console and PC, December 2nd. Enjoy the epic and sweeping story in this follow-up to Final Fantasy XIII. Meet new characters and test yourself with a new enhanced battle system. It's no longer about facing destiny. It's time to create a new future and change the world! Lawn Mowing Simulator, Cloud Console and PC, December 2nd. Take a break from the real world and enjoy the challenge of serenity of mowing the great British countryside in Lawn Mowing Simulator. Rubber Band Bandits, Cloud Console, and PC, ID at Xbox, December 2nd, available on day one with Game Pass. A wild multiplayer Marty Rubber Bandits is a beat em up brawler where you steal, smash, and scavenge as much cash as you can. Prepare for hilarious physics based combat with wacky weapons and a huge lineup of character, criminal characters. Dodge deadly traps, bash rival bandits, and race from the cops to commit the perfect heist. Stardew Valley, Cloud Console, and PC. ID at Xbox, December 2nd. You've inherited your grandfather's old farm plot in Stardew Valley. Armed with hand-me-down tools, you'll set out to begin your life. Can you learn to lift off the land and turn these overgrown fields into a thriving home? Warhammer 40,000 Battle Sector Cloud Console BC December 2nd. In the grim darkness of the far future, there is only war. Experience every bone, rat, explosion, and soul crushing charge in Warhammer 40,000 Battle Sector. The definitive battle scale game of turn based strategy and fast paced combat that takes you to battlefields of the 41st millennium. What the <gasps> heck? Alex, if you ask me how many Warhammer 40,000s they've been, I would say a million. Because there seems to be every time someone brings up Warhammer, there's a new one. I was going to say 40,000. 40,000, yeah. Space Warlords 
or space warlord <laughs> organ <laughs> trading simulator cloud console pc id at xbox december 7th available on day one game pass buy sell and trade organs in a strange universe full of clients keep vampire leech organs from devouring the goods inside your cargo hold teach fleshy the snowman to love and more the quivering innards of alien capitalism await in this sci-fi body horror market tycoon game you didn't know you needed Halo. What? In- <laughs> <laughs> Halo Infinite Cloud Console and PC, December eighth, available on day one with Game Pass. When all hope is lost, humanity's fate hangs in the balance. Master Chief is ready to confront the most ruthless foe he's ever faced. Begin anew and step inside the armor of humanity's greatest hero to experience an epic adventure and finally explore the scale of the Halo Ring itself. Jump into the free-to-play Halo Infinite multiplayer beta today and enjoy all of Season 1 Heroes of Reach has to offer. Plus, all your progress will carry over into full Halo Infinite launch on December 8th. One Piece Pirate Warriors 4, Cloud Console PC, December 9th. Ahoy, pirates! Fight Hordes of Amity's adventure with trusted allies and experience awesome One Piece action lifted straight from the anime in One Piece Pirate Warriors 4. Place yourself in the thick of the One Piece world with as bi- what what One Piece world with as buildings come crashing down around you, and attacks throw up smoke and dust with each action on the battlefield. What? Who broke this? Aliens Fire Team Elite Cloud Console PC ID at Xbox December fourteenth. Set in the iconic Alien universe. Aliens Fire Team Elite is a cooperative third person survival shooter that drops your fire team of hardened Marines into their desperate fight to contain the evolving xenomorph threat. Among Us Console, ID at Xbox, December 14th. Play with 4 to 15 players online or local Wi Fi as you attempt to prepare your spaceship for departure. But beware. As one of more pl- one or more random players among the crew are imposters bent on killing everyone. Stay in tune for upcoming addition to Xbox Cloud Gaming. Didn't Fortnite straight up just take this as a mode? Yes, they did. Yeah, mm-hmm. they did. Called they straight up imposters. just took it. They straight up were like, <laughs> "This mode's pretty fucking cool," and they just took it. Same thing they did with um, Prop Hunter. They did that too. They put oh yeah, in the game. I remember that. And then yeah. let's not forget they did that with Battle Royale with <laughs> PUBG. At least then they admitted it though. They admitted like, hey, we really like PUBG, so we're gonna use the Fortnite Battle Royale thing in this. But like at least they admitted it. The the last time they did the Among Us thing, they didn't even admit it. Oh, I think they did recently, but they didn't at the time. Uh, Achievers, don't forget the Halo Infinite multiplayer past tense MA40 AR bundle is on December 8th. If you want to challenge XP, double XPs, two challenge swaps, and an exclusive shader for the assault rifle in uh, Halo Infinite. Yeah. This is all leaving December 15th. Again, this is all leaving Xbox Game Pass December 15th. If you want to secure your 20% off, make sure you buy them before they leave. Beholder Cloud Console piece. Sorry. Beholder is leaving Cloud and Console. Dark Pictures, Man of Madon, Cloud and PC. Guacamelee 2, Cloud Console and PC. Will Mont's Warehouse, Cloud Console and PC. Onto the End, Cloud Console and PC. Ukulele and the Impossible Air, Cloud Console and PC. Are these Woo! Dark Picture games worth playing? Um, seems they to be pretty terrifying. mixed. I don't know. Seems to be pretty it mixed seemed- on like the actual feedback okay. of the games. Interesting, because I like I at first I thought they were like continuations of like the Until Dawn games. Like until or until dawn, excuse me, because no right. games. I don't. But I was like, is it even part of that, or is it just a in that same universe, or what is it? Does, yes, like they are in the same universe. Yes. Interesting. I don't right. know. <laughs> Xbox Game with Go December twenty twenty first lineup: yeah. Escape Us Two, Tropica Five, Orcs Must Die, Insanely Twisted Shadow Planet. Those last two are your three sixty games. Okay. December is always a really bad games with gold one and PlayStation Plus, but this one's pretty bad. Yeah. PlayStation Plus for December. Godfall Challenger Edition. Alex, I want to talk to you about this really quick. Lego okay. DC Supervillains Mortar Shell. 
And let's not forget, you get Persistence, Walking Dead, Saints and Sinners, and Until You Fall <laughs> as free downloads. Remember, you do not have to have VR to have those last three games. Although you do to play them, you don't to acquire them. Just add them to your library for if you do get a VR, you'll have something to play. Yep. Now, Alex, have you heard anything about Godfall Challenger Edition? I have. I have heard that is literally only the multiplayer. So and it's not, not the even the fucking game. Why is apparently, this on there? So apparently the campaign was uh, was was crappy. So there was like it's not even it's not even the best part of the game. Apparently yeah. The so I think I think what what they want to do is like hey, like we're gonna give like, you the multiplayer. Although just give them. It was like both. it was like Fortnite it was like with the online and then save the world. Nobody cared for the save the world, so they went to the online. It, to me, that's what it sounded like. I'm reading up on it. Okay. Yeah, I've I haven't played this game, but I heard so this game. So Counterplay, there. which is the devs behind Godfall, argue okay. that the Challenger edition is not a trial and they describe it as quote a new cut price limited edition, end quote. <laughs> yeah, so you're not getting the kit pain. <laughs> what does that mean? This is a new cut price limited edition. It's like you could have just released the whole game and no one would have bitched. And you still get the same outcome. The multiplayer is on there. What's the cool. difference? I don't understand. What is it? I said, what's the difference? You could have released the whole game, but the multiplayer is still on there. Oh, yeah. So, like, I think what, they just didn't want, to give you, they didn't want to give you the single player. <clears throat> they want you to pay for it. <clears throat> I guess so. I mean, I mean, that is probably what they want. I don't know. Alex? Hmm. That is the news for the week. We don't really have a date update this week, so that is the show. All right. For you this week. This was a fun one and a very long one. We had a lot to talk about. A little pregnant pause for everyone that I wanted everyone to check their phone to see if it was still going. Anyways, <laughs> Alex, any last <laughs> thoughts with the achievers? I really hope Deathloop doesn't win Game of the Year. And on that note, <laughs> really quick, the, so uh, Alex, I usually end the the show with how I like to begin the show with one question. Usually, that question is Alex. What do you have queued mm. up for the week? This, of course, could be a game, a video game, a uh, question. Uh, sorry, uh, a game, a video game, a book, a comic book, or a movie, or a TV show. It could be anything. What do you have queued up for the week? That is usually what I do ask you. I think we can kind of infer what you're going to play, right? Halo Infinite. I have a lot, by the way. Alex, what do I have to do? Tell me right now, and I'll do it. What do I have hmm. to do to get you to play with me December 7th, Destiny 2? Can you stroke my beard? Oh, my God. <laughs> no, I told you I was going to get on. Oh, uh, yeah, you did. You did. I just said depending on the time, because there's a lot, because I got Jurassic World, yep. Mario Party Superstars, yep. Halo. Yep. I got to finish my shows. I mean, there's so much going on. I understand. Just make some time for me, all right? Just make some time. I want to show you the stuff. I'll, I'll be like the guy, like the used car salesman, like, look, this is cool. And you're going to be like, yeah. <laughs> but do you have it in red? Uh, but do you have it in red? <laughs> Alex, mm. I have Halo Infinite queued up. I have this session too. I've already talked about what I've had queued up. <clears throat> Achievers, we are going to see you later this week. So we're At not, the Game Awards. It's gonna, not there. We won't be there. <laughs> it is in person, though. We could go. but oh, we yeah, I know. To. No, I Achievers, thank you so much for listening to this show. We'll see you not too far into the future. We'll see you bright and early, Friday morning. <clears throat> but until then, go Chief. Go Chief.